Hello everyone, my name is Brian Parman. I'm the NDSU Agricultural Finance Specialist, uh, working for the Department of Ag Business and Applied Economics and uh, NDSU Extension. And today's presentation, I want to talk a bit about backgrounding profits and returns for fall of 2021, headed into uh, 2022. And uh, this year we're dealing with uh, some different circumstances than we have in the past with respect to uh, livestock, particularly cattle prices, live cattle and uh, feeder calves, as well as um, feed costs, things like hay, uh, dry distillers, grains, corn, those kind of things, crop commodity prices a bit higher this year, uh, but, but we've had some strong livestock prices this fall. And as we go through this, we're going to see how this is going to work out for uh, feeders potentially across North Dakota and uh, the surrounding states. So for the uh, scenarios that I'm running here and that we're kind of uh, going by, um, these are the price assumptions that we are working from this year. And this is quite a bit different than last year. Uh, corn, for instance, we're assuming about $5.75 a bushel, corn silage at $55 a ton, dried distillers grains well above $200 a ton at $220. Um, most of the things like limestone, limestone bag salt, and, and uh, premix, I didn't change too much, uh, but hay prices uh, are, are quite a bit higher, uh, approaching $200 a ton for alfalfa hay and uh, $125 for grass hay. And then the yardage fee. Uh, we settled in on about $0.40 cents a day for yardage, uh, part of that due to the higher energy costs uh, that folks are facing this year with higher natural gas prices. Um, fuel prices, things like that, as well as potentially electricity costs. And then trucking, last year's assumption was about 75 cents per hundredweight, uh, increased it quite a bit, almost 66% to uh, $1.25 per hundredweight. On the other hand, interest uh, slightly down to about 5% assumption, and then the shrink and death loss staying roughly about the same. So this is kind of the price assumptions here. Obviously, as I go through this, you can adjust those in your mind a little bit uh, if, if you need to. Uh, if you think some of those are a little bit too high, perhaps too low, um, that, that's just sort of a, a, a good benchmark that uh, we feel like that we're running from here. And uh, so if, if you think, again, that some of these are, are off, uh, feel free kind of to, to maybe make a mental note and adjust them accordingly. So this are, these are the six different scenarios that we are uh, running through and that I'll be going through during this presentation. And we have basically three steer and three heifer backgrounding scenarios. Um, one of which is the uh, uh, 1.8 1, uh, 1 to 2 pounds uh, average daily gain for, for steers. Uh, and these, these animals start at 500 pounds and are sold at 800 pounds. And this is the feed cost under those assumptions that uh, I was running through per day. So feed cost per, per pound. Uh, then the 2.8 pound scenario, slightly heavier, uh, purchased heavier and sold a little bit heavier. That's uh, 2.8 pound average daily gain. That's going to be about 60 cents per day or 60 cents per pound under that ration scenario. Then a, then a much faster daily gain at 3.6 pounds a day. And these are starting at 575 pounds all the way out to about finished. And that comes out at about 64 cents a day. Heifers, uh, we start with a scenario of lighter weight heifers, 450 up to 750 at 72 cents a day. Uh, and then we have uh, 550 weight up to 850 weight at a cost of 77 cents per day. And then a 2.8 pound average daily gain for heifers from 525 weight to 805 pounds at a feed cost of uh, approximately 59 cents per day. So again, I'm gonna, so to start with, I'm gonna go through the uh, steer feeding scenarios first, and uh, uh, then I'll go through the three heifer scenarios after that, and then we'll compare, uh, compare all six. So this is the prices that we uh, that I'm I'm using for this um, presentation here, uh, and this came from the North Dakota Weekly Auction Summary ending uh, the week of November 13th. Which uh, this is this recording is being made on the 15th, so this was Friday uh, last week, um, and showing the the steer prices for the for the various ranges of weight. And then I put a live steer price there assumption at the bottom. So for for fat cattle. 
at about $131.40 at 1,350 pounds was the last report I saw for some of the uh, the buyers down in, in uh, Dakota City kind of area. So these are the assumptions working from here uh, for as far as the value of the animal coming into your backgrounding operation and then the value that you would be selling at at whatever the weight happens to be, 750, 850 pounds, et cetera. And note, I use the average price here. I don't use a high and a low. I'm just simply using the, the average price because, again, this is an estimation uh, for these scenarios. So this is our first scenario uh, we're running here, and this is that 500 weight to 800 weight um, steer uh, at 1.8 pounds per day. This is the ration being fed, and you'll note here on this, this right column where it says dollar per head per day, that's not dollars per pound. So you'll note that uh, uh, it's a dollar thirty per day. And we, I gave uh, the previous chart that showed the price per pound. This is a, um, you know, the dollar uh, cost per day versus dollars per pound, assuming that one point eight pound per day um, scenario. So we put it through our uh, our backgrounding budget. Uh, estimator and I use the North Dakota State University backgrounding budget and make some modifications to it. Uh, for instance, if you open up the budget, you see online down below the return to labor and management risk, you'll see all these prices for feedstuffs. Uh, I simply didn't use that because I already did the ration assumption up there. So uh, for the sake of this presentation, I just put it in as the cost and you'll see the feed cost of $1.30 per day rather than rather than going and filling out each individual item within the ration uh, since i already showed what the ration was you can you can see that and what we have here in this scenario to get to approximately 800 pounds that animal is going to be on feed for 167 days and with the lot cost and the shrink and the trucking our uh, total return over labor and management is about minus eight dollars and the biggest reason that this one actually takes a loss, and, and this is kind of the scenario for all the steer scenarios, is that the, the current market price of uh, feeder calves, steers, particularly that 550 weight uh, area, uh, th those animals are, are bringing a relatively strong price. So in order for someone to make any money on, uh, on steers, that 500, 550 weight, they're going to have to put on more weight faster than than 1.8 pounds per day is is just kind of what this is telling you so they're on weight long enough here and 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 it just takes too long it's just too slow and so essentially there just isn't a big return if we're not putting on the weight on our steers fast enough so at 1.8 pounds that that steer um it, it just isn't generating the returns at 167 days on feed but you'll see going forward uh, this back uh, backgrounding and putting on the weight, at least on steers and and heifers as well, uh, is is a, is a profitable uh, situation going forward. So our next scenario, uh, we're running um, 575 weight animals to 855 pound animals, and this is, again is a, a, a higher rate of gain, 2.8 pounds per day instead of that 1.8 that I that I had in the last scenario. Uh, total feed cost per day is a bit higher. Uh, because of the fact that, that, that we're putting on more weight. Um, so it's $1.68 per, per head per day on average to, to get from 575 pounds to 855 pounds at 2.8 pounds per day. And you see here, here's the ration. Uh, you know, a lot of silage corn being, being in this ration as well as legume hay and uh, some corn and DDGs. The budget here and the profitability on a 855 weight steer or putting on 2.8 pounds from 575 to 855 is a fairly strong uh, proposition. We, hit, we have decent, decent profitability numbers at $65 per head and that's at that average daily gain of 2.8 pounds per day. Basically signifying that being on feed less time uh, while still putting on the weight uh, actually pays uh, as far as steers go. And even though the feed cost is, is significantly higher at $1.68 per day because uh, we're putting on more weight, uh, they're only on feed for 100 days instead of approximately 167. And under that scenario, we wind up with a situation where we have uh, essentially a, a much stronger return and $65 per head. So it just shows here that, that 
again, as has been in previous presentations or renditions of this that I've done, uh, in different scenarios and feed costs in years past, that it just shows that putting on weight faster tends to be a much more profitable proposition for uh, producers uh, than, than, than leaving them out there for a longer period of time as, as yardage costs wind up uh, eating up a lot of the gains. So here's our final steer scenario, and this is basically taking them from a calf at 575 pounds all the way out to pretty much a fat uh, calf and uh, just about ready to, to be slaughtered. And, and this is a much faster uh, rate of gain at 3.6 pounds per day. And of course, for that reason, you're looking at $2.30, $2.31 per, per, uh, per head per day to, to put on that kind of weight with uh, much of the ration coming from silage corn and uh, uh, corn uh, grain, as well as some DDGs and grass hay. But this is the, the ration for, for this scenario. Now, this is the, the spreadsheet that, that comes out there. And you'll note that despite the higher cost per day and the longer time on feed, because this animal is going to be on feed for 95 days longer than the previous example, uh, even though we're putting on more, uh, more weight per day, we're just flat out putting on more weight. Uh, so it's going to stay in the yard a lot longer. And this, this basically pays out to $85 and 43 cents, uh, per, per head. So, uh, again, a decent amount of profit to be made, uh, backgrounding this steer to, to, uh, basically all the way to finish. Uh, you'd be looking at making $85 and 43 cents a head approximately. But it's also worth mentioning the longer they're on feed, uh, even though we're putting on the weight, then there you run the risk of things like feed costs changing or livestock markets changing. Because under these scenarios, remember, I'm assuming a fixed uh, fat cattle price and 200 days from now, fat cattle prices could change. They could be better or they obviously could be worse. So somebody may be looking at this as a, as a possibility might want to go ahead and, and use some of the, the revenue protection products buy a futures contract or something like that uh, in order to uh, uh, take advantage of the prices as they are and ensure that there aren't going to be uh, any losses. So our next set of scenarios, the three that we're going to talk about here are uh, heifer feeding scenarios. Um, and uh, uh, these follow along similar lines to the three steer scenarios we had with some slight modifications. So here are the prices that are used for the heifer feeding scenarios, and they're pulled from the same auction report, uh, looking at uh, feeder heifers um, all the way from you know 300 pounds up to 1,000 pounds. I don't have a a fat heifer price on here because I do not do a, a finishing heifer uh, scenario uh, in, in, in any of the three that, that you'll see going forward. So the first scenario being done is 450 pounds, so lightweight heifers up to 750 pounds at a relatively low average daily gain, you know, the, the lower end of the steers at that 1.8 pounds per day, and a, a good share of this ration coming from silage. And, and a good share coming from grass hay. And that comes out to $1.29, $1.30 per day to put on this 1.8 pounds on our heifers from 450 pounds to 756. So to achieve uh, or arrive from 450 to 756 pounds at 1.8 pound per day, that animal is gonna have to be on feed for about 170 days. So quite a long time on feed for these, the, these heifers here almost as long as finishing out a steer uh, all the way from 550 to, to 1,270 something pounds uh, um, at 3.6 pounds. But you'll notice down here a positive return of $36.18 despite the fact that they're in the lot for quite a while at 170 days and this feed cost and of course yardage fees wind up adding up day after day after day. But what we're seeing is that as far as heifers go, even in the, in the least uh, or the slowest uh, rate of gain scenario that, that's being done from the lighter weight, lightest weight up to 750 pounds, still a profitable endeavor. At, and, and when we're covering all of our costs here and, and, and netting $36 per head. So that's a, that's a pretty strong return out the gate. And I've done this uh, presentation or similar for, for the last several years. And typically this this particular scenario is not really a money maker per se, or it hasn't been in the past, but it is this year. And one of the big reasons is that 
price gap between steers and heifers when you go from 550 weight up to 700 or 800 pounds is it almost goes away i mean 800 850 weight 750 weight heifers are selling for almost as much in, in a lot of cases as the uh, similar weighted steers so that price gap closing significantly you're winding up making making up a lot of ground financially by by putting that weight on so not only are you making money putting on some of the weight that cattle buyers are looking for right now but you're also making money by closing that price gap between steers and heifers so even even the this scenario here which which typically i've done in the past has not yielded a positive return it is this year at 36 dollars 18 per per head on average so our next scenario it's the similar it's the same daily rate of gain at 1.8 pounds per day but we're starting with 550 weight heifers up to 850 weight instead of 450 to 750 like the last scenario again though using uh, relying heavily on silage for our feed and and grass hay as well with a little bit of ddgs in this case uh, for a daily cost of a dollar 39 let's call it a dollar 40 uh, per day to put on that kind of weight uh, under this scenario so basically we are putting on the same amount of weight 300 pounds uh, at the same average daily gain so that these animals are going to be on feed pretty much the same amount of time as the previous scenario 170 days but you'll notice that the the feed cost does change but look at our uh return to labor and management going from uh, what it was I, you know, 36 37 maybe up to 40 dollars per head all the way up to nearly 100 dollars per head and the reason why is the amount that's being paid by cattle buyers for these 850 weight animals that price is really strong on heifers 850 weight heifers where the price gap between heifers and steers is pretty much gone entirely and so with strong prices for 850 weight calves uh, it's really it's really reflected here in this return of, of $100 per head so we are making some money on uh, on on putting on on the feed on the, the the feed end of things but really a lot of this money a lot of these returns are coming from that price uh that strong price for 800 850 weight heifers as well as steers for that matter but that's that's really where the strength in this is coming from and showing that uh this year uh, uh compared to all others is, is an outstanding year really to be backgrounding your heifers uh, and taking advantage of what the market is telling you and, and what the market is saying is that uh, feedlots finishers uh, they're really wanting these 800 850 weight calves that's that's what they're they're all looking for and uh, they're willing to pay for it and, it and it just shows right here so the final scenario uh, doing with uh, hef dealing with heifers and the final scenario of the of the presentation is heifers from 525 pounds to 805 uh, at, a, at a more rapid uh, rate of gain at 2.8 pounds per day so a pound more than than the previous two scenarios and this again will be a little bit more expensive per day to do because we're putting on more weight relying heavily still on silage some corn and grass hay and then and then a bit of ddgs as well for this scenario and here's how this particular scenario shakes out uh, you can see that uh, the animal is on feed for fewer days instead of 170 it's down to 100 because we're putting on putting on the weight faster uh, the beginning value uh, the sales prices are, are slightly different uh, and, and the feed cost is higher uh, but you'll note that the return to labor and management is actually uh, the highest of all three scenarios in this case uh, this showing that putting on the weight uh, faster does in fact pay okay and and you'll notice that the the risk of keeping of, of this particular scenario is probably lower because they're on feed for fewer days so you're making just as much money as you did in the last scenario but not having but keeping them in the yard 70 fewer days so you, if you think of it from a risk st uh, standpoint, uh, it's less riskier the, long, the, the fewer days you have them, less susceptible to changes in feed prices. Because again, as I make these scenarios, uh, we're assuming consistent corn prices, consistent cattle prices, consistent well feed across the board, uh, consistent shipping costs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if any of those 
you know, take a turn for the worse. In other words, feed costs go up or cattle prices decline. Uh, a lot of this is, is going to change. Um, and so uh, the, 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 the faster that we're able to turn this, the, the, the more likely this is to come true, unless you're taking advantage of some of these, uh, these, these price protection type of, type of avenues that uh, our producers have. But you can see here, this is a really strong indicator that, that backgrounding heifers this year is, is a, is a, there's, a, there's demand for it. There's demand for animals that, uh, at that 800 to 850 pound range. And that, that again, that finishers are looking for, for weight being on the animals that they're buying. So here are the six, <coughs> the six scenarios that were put together. And uh, just comparing them all side by side in terms of how many days they were on feed, the profit and loss total per head, okay, and then the dollars per day profit or loss in, in the one case. And here we see that this, this final heifer scenario, the 2.8 pounds per day with 100 days on feed, uh, that's a really strong profit margin, uh, making uh, about a dollar per day per head uh, that they're out there. So that's, that's one of the better uh, scenarios that I have. And you'll notice that while you do make about as much money at 1.8 pounds per day in, in terms of uh, total profit per head, uh, the, the, the dollars per day is quite different. And that's simply because of how many days you have to keep them to get them to 100, uh, uh, 850 pounds at 1.8 pounds per day versus getting them to 805 pounds at 2.8 pounds per day. So you can see that that daily uh, amount of profit for the, for the 2.8 pound scenario, the 525 weight to 805 weight, uh, that's, a, that's a pretty strong indicator that, that folks are paying for uh, our producers or backgrounders to put weight on the animals themselves. And steers, again, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're a pretty strong, uh, there's a strong draw to do that too. It's just that we, you got to kind of be pick, pick the correct scenario to, to operate under. And in this case, the best dollar per day scenario is 2.8 pounds per day from 575 weight to 855 weight, which gets you about 67 cents per day on your steers for a total per head of $65. Now feeding them all the way out to finish does make the most money per head on, in, in the case of steers at $85 and 43 cents per head, but the dollars per day is 44 cents because they're on feed for so long, you know, 195 days. So you do make total, total profit per animals higher, but your profit per day is lower. And then again, you got to think about the risk in the, in the 575 to 855 weight category, they're only on feed for hundred days. In the, in the 575 to finish, it's, it's an extra 95 days to be out there to run the risk of death loss and shrink and all kinds of weather issues that may slow the rate and, and, and wind up digging into your profits a little bit, not to mention market situations and conditions that can, that can change this too. So the key points and the key takeaways that I kind of want folks to think about in, in this, uh, from this presentation is that essentially cattle buyers are paying for weight. Uh, they are, they're looking at uh, 550 weight animals versus 800, 850 weight or even 750 pound animals and saying, you know, we're willing to pay up for these heavier calves simply because there's less risk. Uh, feed prices are relatively high right now. I would rather get my lot full of uh, animals that are closer to to being uh, taken to market to, to being fat, essentially. So I'm I'm willing to pay, and the price gap on heifers and steers closes pretty remarkably when you go from those 500 and 500 pound animals up to 8 850. Uh, it almost disappears entirely, and it makes backgrounding heifers this year extremely attractive. One one of the more attractive options uh, in recent memory. Is, is or at least since I've been doing these uh, comparisons that if there was a year to background heifers and put the weight on as quickly as you could, this is definitely one of them. Uh, again, a lot of things can happen in markets. And so, you know, if you're going to do this, it may, may pay to take advantage of some of the pricing options available uh, to you. Uh, but right now it definitely looks like something that uh, if you have the means to do it, it, it money can be made. Um, uh, putting weight on and backgrounding. And then a few more key points, uh, putting on weight fast still pays. Uh, 
even even at five dollar and seventy five cent corn and, and higher hay prices, uh, it seems like no matter I, I don't want to say no matter what, I'm sure we can find some situations where that's not the case, but it seems like that putting on weight faster typically winds up paying more. And, and part of it's a function of how these budgets are set up. Uh, because what winds up happening is yardage fees eat, in, eat into your daily profits pretty quickly. And if you're keeping track of your own time, uh, wear and tear on machinery, uh, other labor costs, if you have any kind of paid labor, utility bills, et cetera, et cetera, wear and tear on your uh, facilities, uh, the longer the animals are in there, the more of that those costs add up. And so if if you're making money on feed, it is always going to pay more to to you know if your feed if your returns on feed are, are, are positive, just just weight versus feed. It's always going to pay more to to basically put the weight on faster. That's just kind of what these scenarios show and, and what's been true for the last several years. That and, and even when, when I've shown a loss the loss is smaller when you put on weight faster. That's just, that's been the case. And, and right now it is certainly true uh, as has been in the past. Well, I wanna thank everyone for watching. Uh, hopefully you were able to get something out of this presentation that helps you with any decisions that you might've been pondering or thinking about going from you know this fall headed into next spring, as far as backgrounding calves or selling, selling out right, right away. Uh, you can see my email address is right there on the on the screen. Uh, if you have any questions about this presentation or something you want clarification of, I, I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that I can. So thanks again for watching and uh, hope you all stay warm this winter. Thank you.